Okay. Um, so the final medium difficulty question in 3M6 is actually rather challenging. Um, the, uh, well, again, before beginning, make sure that you run the code in this block and this block before beginning. Uh, otherwise, you won't be able to run this code. Um, but let's go down. Okay, 3M6. Um, so, uh, so the question is, suppose that you want to estimate the, the Earth's proportion of water very precisely. Specifically, you want a 99% interval of the posterior distribution of P to be only 0 0.05 wide. Um, this means the distance between the upper and lower bound of the interval should be 0 0.05. How many times will you need to toss the globe to do this? So, um, so again, if you aren't familiar with the globe tossing example, then you should look at the, er the earlier videos or make sure you read the chapter uh, in uh, McLaren's book, Statistical Rethinking, Second Edition. Um, but this question is asking us to basically estimate a sample size. How many times do we need to toss the globe before we get uh, before we get an estimate? of the uh, of the posterior distribution how much of the globe is covered in water that we can be very confident about how confident uh, to where to where the interval is only 0 0.05 wide or eight or or in other words that uh, so mm -hmm. so the question asks for a percentile percentile interval but I have done a high uh, a high density percentile interval so this wants us to find uh, to find the sample size that it will require for us uh, to find the 99% HDPI that is very, very narrow, less so 5% interval. Okay. Um, so in order to do this, we have to basically iterate through some of the code that we've used above, trying to generate these uh, these uh, uh, intervals. Where we're going, where we're going to, let's see here, where we're going to uh, basically create a posterior distribution, sample from it, and then find the HPDI of, in this case, it's going to be 99%, and we're going to use different numbers of samples until we find a uh, a 99 uh, percent interval that is less than 5% wide. Okay. Um, so the code for doing this is a little involved. It's not terrible, uh, but let's walk through it. So first I'm defining uh, tosses, the number of tosses, and this is just a vector where the first, uh, the first element is one and then two and then all the way up to 10,000. So it's representing everywhere from one toss to 10,000 tosses. And then I'm also, I also have to define a value for P, for the proportion of the globe that is covered in water. And I'm going to use 0 0.5, and I'm calling it the worst P, and I'll talk about that after we get through the code here, but, but uh, that's what we're using. Okay. And then a lot of this is elements from, uh, from the code that you've already seen. I'm defining my P grid, which is every po or many, a thousand possible values of uh, the proportion of the globe covered in water. I'm using a flat prior here, okay? And then I'm defining this object called HPDI diffs, and so this is gonna define the width of that uh, credibility interval, okay? Um, and so now, uh, and right now it's empty, and so I'm gonna populate it with this for loop here. And so the for loop says, for every value in tosses, one through 10,000, first I'm gonna define an object called waters, and this is, in a random experiment, how many waters show up out of tosses, one toss to up to 10,000 tosses, given a probability of 0 0.5, okay? And for each one of these tosses, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run that experiment 100 times, okay? And now I'm going to define the likelihood, just like we have in the previous videos, okay? Using the number of waters that I found in the previous experiment, given that many tosses with the probability across all of P grid. Okay? I find the posterior uh, and I sample from it just like we've done in previous videos. I calculate the, H, uh, the HPDI, okay, the 99% one, and then I calculate the difference. Okay? 
and this value will be stored here and we're going to look through these values until we find one that's lower than 0 0.05. Okay, so then when I run the code, I've already ran the code because it takes a second to run, I didn't want to make you wait, um, but I'm going to find which values are less than 0 0.05 and I'm, and I'm just going to display the first 500 of them um, because there's many of them, so I'm just displaying 500 of them, the, the, the lowest 500. Uh, and then I'm going to plot, I'm going to plot these, the difference in the intervals, okay, uh, or the, uh, the width of the intervals, okay, across different number of tosses, okay, and, and uh, so that's here, okay. So again, this is, this, uh, this here is the 500, the first 500 values for which the interval is less than uh, 0 0.05, okay, starting at 3,000 and then goes up, okay, but there's more beyond this. And now here is just a plot of the, the interval of the HPDI, okay, across the many tosses, okay, so you see this rapid decline as we gain more data, we rapidly decrease uh, our, the, the size of our of our interval, in other words, we become, we become more confident very quickly, but it begins to asymptote or plateau as we gain more and more data. Okay, and that's uh, well, that, that's that's just how these things go. As you collect more data, you have proportionally less impact on your confidence in, in the results. Okay, but now I'm just going to zoom in here uh, for this plot. I'm just going to zoom in to, what is it, about uh, 2,500 to 7,500 tosses, right? Uh, and looking at the, the intervals, the width of the intervals across here, okay? And so if I'm looking at all of this, and I wanna make sure that I'm getting uh, a 99% confidence interval, or cre I'm sorry, credibility interval, that is roughly less than or equal to 0 0.05, about the lowest I could hope the, the fewest number of samples I could hope for is about 3,000. But we notice that at 3,000, not a lot of the intervals are still well above that. And so it would probably take somewhere between 3,000 and 6,000, it looks like, but before we could be really sure that we were going to get enough tosses. Okay. All right. So earlier I said that I was using the worst P. Okay. Well, or what I called worst P, and I need to explain that now. Um, so when we're developing the uh, when we're trying to predict how many samples we're going to need remember we don't know uh, we don't know what the true value of p is and so in this case it makes sense to plan that that the value of p is is the most uncertain value okay now in a binomial distribution a, a p equals 0 0.5 or 50 percent is the most uncertain in other words the data there will be most variable and so so a value of 0 0.5 is going to be the hardest one to pin down. And so that's what I'm going to plan for, right? Again, I don't know what the true value of P is, but if I'm trying to find how many samples I need, the most samples I need is if P is 0 0.5, okay? If, if P was higher or lower than that, I'm going to need less samples. And so to, to demonstrate that, I'm going to run that exact same code, but now with uh, a high P as well as a low P of 90% and 10%, okay? And you'll notice that uh, whereas with the, with the worst P, we weren't hitting any, uh, we weren't hitting any acceptable credibility intervals until about 3,000. But as I become, as I change the P away from, uh, away from the most uncertain, 0 0.5, I start to hit them right around a thousand, okay, for both uh, for both of these, okay. Uh, did I? Uh, 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 I think I did that right. Yeah. Are those identical? No, good. Okay. Um, so uh, so in other words, um, because we again because we don't know the true value of p, it makes sense to plan for the worst case scenario. If we were to plan, if, if we were to plan how many samples we need for 0 0.7, that, that wouldn't make sense because we don't know that the true value is 0 0.7. We're, we're collecting data to figure out the true value. Okay. 
That's all.